All right. In this film, I want to talk to you about something called motional EMF. Okay. Uh, not emotional, like, oh, it's EMF, it's so beautiful, but motional because of motion. So here's the way this idea goes. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by drawing in a magnetic field. Okay. So let's say that we have a B field. Uh, let's make it go, I don't know, I guess out of the page. Okay. So I'm going to draw a whole bunch of dots. Okay. They represent the electric, the magnetic field lines. So here we go. Doop. Okay, these are dots showing magnetic field coming out of the page towards us. I'm going to label it next to it, capital B in purple, so we know those purple dots are magnetic field. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this metal bar, right? This is a conductor. Okay? It doesn't have to be iron. It could be aluminum. It could be copper. It could be something that's not magnetic, right? Uh, it can be a copper or a carbon, carbon rod, I guess, graphite rod. But anyway, here we go. I'm going to take this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this across through the field like that. All right? And then you say, now, okay. Now, thinking back to what we did earlier in the unit, you say, Moving this metal bar, this bar is neutral, right? Pushing it through magnetic field lines, is that going to do anything? Interestingly, it does. All right, here's the deal. You say, okay, I remember that if I take a charged particle, and if the charged particle moves across magnetic field lines, it gets pushed by the magnetic field, right? That's what happens to charged particles. You say, but this thing's neutral. You say, yeah, it's neutral, but inside this metal bar, inside this conductor, there are charged particles. Just, we'll just say protons and electrons for right now. Really, it's positive metal ions and that's negative outer electrons that we care about. The point is, those positive charges, they can't move, right? Those big heavy metal ions, they're not going to go anywhere. But those electrons can move. So when I take this metal bar and I shove this bar across those field lines, the positive charges, which way, did they get, which, which way would the force be on them? We say, well, here we go. V, right hand rule. We're going to QV cross B, right? V is this way, right? V cross B, B is going on the page. The force would be down on the positive ions. But the positive ions can't move, right? But they're getting yanked down. The negative charge on their hand, the force would go the other way, they'd be shoved up. But the negative ions, the negative, the electrons can move in the bar. And so electrons will get pushed up to the top end of the bar. I'm going to draw this bar here. So I'm going to draw the bar a little thicker, okay, so I can show what's happening inside that bar, okay? All right. So what's going to happen here is, again, the force on a positive ion, metal ion, you say it would have a force in the magnetic field trying to shove it down. But it doesn't matter because it can't move. However, negative charges, they'll have a force of the magnetic field going the other way, right? Let's just double check one more time. V cross B forces down on a positive. It must be up on a negative. Okay. Which means this top part will have electrons being shoved into it, right? So this left end of the bar is going to start to charge up negatively, right? Well, as I move across the field, am I going to be getting... You see, and now if electrons go this way, what's going to be left charged down here? Electrons are leaving this end. This end is going to start to charge up positive, right? Yeah, yeah. Overall, the bar is still neutral. The total force on the bar is still zero. But electrons are getting yanked one way. All right. Hey, as this happens, are electrons going to keep going forever? Just more and more electrons piling up on this end? You say, no, because this starts becoming really negative and they'll repel more electrons from coming in. There's a certain point where I have enough charge there that, I that this force isn't enough to fight against the force from all those negative charges and the positive here trying to attract them back the other way, right? And so then the current will stop flowing. There'll be this momentary flow here when I start shoving it and then that flow will stop and I'll have a certain charge here and here. The idea I'm getting across here is these charges then will make an electric field in the bar, won't they?
there'll be an E field from positive to negative. Here's my field inside that metal bar. There is an E field. If you want to be picky, it's an induced E field. It's an E field we cause by pushing this through the magnetic field. Oh, I forgot to put that arrow on there. <laughs> hey, this is a velocity arrow, okay? Lowercase v, we're going to the right, okay? I'm doing it kind of cursive looking v so, so it doesn't get mixed up with a big v for voltage, okay? I know, I just wouldn't put serifs on it. Yeah, you're right, you're right. It's probably better if I just do this, okay? That's my velocity, okay? Anyway. And that makes this happen, all right? Now, when I make this E field, which way is the, the E field lines always show which way a positive would get pushed. Negative is going to get pushed the other way. Electrons will get shoved here until the force from this E field balances out the force from the B field, don't you think? Then electrons will stop flowing, and this is all the electrons are going to get piled there, and all the positive charges will get piled there. So, are missing electrons there. And so you say, hey, if this end is positive and this end is negative, there's an E field from here to there. Here we go. Remember this equation? Delta V is negative integral E dot DL, right? Or DR, DS, whatever. This E field always goes from high V to low V, right? There's a delta V here. Hey, this equation is the one that we expanded out to make Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. See, I just covered this term. Hmm, I just got to be careful with that negative sign that I need there, though. Okay, uh, but yeah. So, I'm making a voltage in the bar. All right, what that means is I can solve for what the voltage will be here if, like, I know the length of the bar, right? Then I'll know this length in the E field. I can figure out the voltage. I can figure out all that stuff if I know like the right variables, right? Like say I know this bar has a length L, right? And I can figure this stuff out because I know these forces have to balance, right? How big the B field is depends on how fast I'm moving and how strong, sorry, how big the E field is here, sorry. Uh, Sorry, how big the, the force magnetic field is depends on QVB, depends on how, how fast I'm moving, how strong the B field is, right? Okay, um, but that's got to be, I got to move at the right speed so that this force gets balanced by that FE. It all relates to each other. And say, hey, this is a case of crossed electric and magnetic fields. We've seen this before in the velocity selector of the mass spec. I've got a B field going one way and an E field going across those field lines the other way. When I do that, there's a certain speed where those forces will balance, okay? All right, so it's gonna be that same sort of calculation. We can say, hey, the force of the E field has to equal the force of the B field, right, for this to happen, right? Charges will flow until those forces balance, right? Maybe we're trying to find the voltage there. And you say, oh, well, that's gonna be QE is Q V cross B, yeah? Okay, in this case, I'm going right across the field lines the angle between V and B is 90 degrees. We could do a problem with the field lines being slanted or something, so that's not 90 degrees, but no big deal for this one. It'll be a sine of 90, which is one. Okay, hey, that Q drops out. Bang, bang. And so now I know how big the E field is, right? At the point where it all reaches equilibrium, right, and those forces balance out, is when E is V times B, right? And you say rearranging then, I can solve, if I know this V, I know the B field strength, I can solve how big the E field is, right? Now if I know how big the E field is, now I can go to this. And I can say, if this is a nice uniform E field, which there's no reason why it wouldn't be, here, yeah, right, nice straight bar, and a nice uniform E field, well, nice speed, yeah. If we're going at a nice constant speed, then this is a constant E, right? And so the constant E would factor out, uh, the angle between E and like my path from here to here. I'm trying to find the delta V from here to here, from point A to point B, right? You say E field's uniform and pops out and constant. And then the dot, that's going to be a cosine of the angle between E and my path. I'm going to go along the E field. It'll be a cosine of zero. So E is going to pop out, cosine of zero, right? And then DL, now I'm just going to integrate DL, right? Integral DL is just this full length. That's just L. 
Let's just eat up. What did I just say? What did I just say? What did I just say? L. All right. When I integrate the L, it's just going to be L. That's my voltage. That's my delta V. Notice I'm going from here to here. I'm going down voltage, right? So that sign really ought to be there, right? And so if I do this, I can find my voltage. E, we just figured out was VB. So what's this going to be? That's my delta V. I usually write it like this. Delta V, right? Or if you like, this is an induced voltage. We might just call it the EMF, right? I think they usually see it written that way. Delta V or the EMF here. Yes, EMF. You say that is, I, I always write it like this. BLV for velocity. I always make it a cursive V on these. Just so that it doesn't get confused with the V for voltage or something, or volts. This equation there. That's the, what we call the motional EMF. It's the voltage that happens in the bar because of its motion across those field lines. All right? All right? If I hooked up a little voltmeter, right, and I attached my voltmeter whoop, whoop, to the two ends here, right, okay, as I shoved that bar across, it would register a voltage, right, and it would be this much. Negative BLV. Every time I see this, I think about that scene in The Princess Bride, if you've seen that movie. You know, what do you have to live for? True love. Oh, he said to blave. Anyway, uh, anyway, moving onward. Uh, so we got that. Okay, so like I said, this is called emotional EMF. Okay, that voltage that gets created here in the bar with those cross field lines. So if you take a chunk of conductor, a chunk of metal, and you push it through magnetic field lines, this happens inside the metal. So this would happen to like an airplane, like a steel-bodied airplane, aluminum frame or something, right? Going through the Earth's magnetic field as that plane flies, it would make a voltage from wingtip to wingtip as it cuts across field lines, right? Or uh, a space shuttle or a spacecraft, right? Orbiting the Earth, passing through the Earth's magnetic field lines, right? Would make a voltage. There's a really, really cool thing that uh, NASA did with a space shuttle mission where they sent out this, like, you know, satellite, right? It was probably about this big around, right? But it was on this really long uh, steel tether, right? This conducting steel tether. And as the space shuttle is, like, orbiting, they pay it out, right? And so that tether, that bar, is cutting across magnetic field lines, making a voltage. They were measuring and experimenting with that. Um, and then there was an arc and it burned through the tether and the, there goes the satellite. Uh, anyway, fun story. Uh, but anyway, uh, but yeah, that was this emotional EMF idea. Okay. Um, okay, so we're cool with this. Uh, Induced EMF is negative BLV, right? Okay. I want to take, take, take you through another uh, application of this real quick. Okay, I lied. It's not going to be real quick, but I'm going to try to make it quick. Okay, I'm going to save... Uh, that little bit there, okay? Let's say I have my magnetic field, okay? Hey, look, uh, same one we had before. Okay, just to make it simple, uh, magnetic field's coming out of the page. But this time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this arrangement. Here I have, uh, ignore this junk, it's just a rectangle, okay, of wire, right? And what I'm gonna do, it's sitting there in the field, just sitting still. But now I take my metal bar and I touch it. So it's touching, contacting there and there, and I'm sliding on those metal contacts, making contact, sliding across. You say, oh, wait a minute. That's like that problem from the homework set. That's like this one, right? Yeah. And I'm sliding it across. Yeah, sliding to the right. Okay. And it's making contact there and there. Okay. So I'm just going to draw it in. Okay. I'm going to take my middle bar. It's sitting on top of the rails there. And we're going to move it this way at some velocity to the right. That's like a lowercase cursive V, okay, is what I'm trying to draw there. Okay, velocity to the right. Okay. 
Now, using what we just talked about, we say, hey, um, maybe as it slides to the right, we say, hey, uh, think about the electrons in the wire. If I do V cross B, force B down on positives, electrons will get shoved up. Electrons are going to get shoved up. That means the current is which way a positive would go, remember? And so the current is down. That's my induced current. You see, oh, wait a minute. That's what we got when we did this problem before with Lenz's law. We said, hey, as this bar goes to the right, there'll be more and more of these little purple field lines shooting out through this left loop. Increase in flux out means current has to flow to make more flux go in, which means the current had to loop around this way. That matches with this, going down this bar and up this side. That's the same thing we saw, but we've explained it a different way now. Instead of explaining the induced current going down because I'm changing the number of field lines going through this loop, we've explained it in terms of the force on the charges, like the Lorentz force shoving them down the wire. See that? So we explained it a different way. I like to talk about the rule with changing the amount of flux because that rule always works. But the explanation that I just gave about the Lorentz force shoving the charges as they cut across field lines, there's a case that I know of where that doesn't explain it. Okay? It's actually talked about the end of the mech U on electromagnetic induction. It's the example that he does with a toroid. Because outside the toroid, there's no field lines to shove on the wire. Anyway, uh, so you can't explain with Lorentz force. You can only explain it with flux. Okay, uh, moving onward. However, we can use this to do some cool calculations like this. All right? Okay, now, I said there was something new I wanted to show you with this. Okay? There are two things we're going to get out of this case. Now, you ready? Check this out. I take this bar and I start sliding across the magnetic field. For either reason you want to talk about, increase in flux out through the left side means voltage has current has to flow to make an increase in flux going in. So it's got to go this way in the left loop. Or if you like, pushing electrons across magnetic field lines shoves the electrons that way, which makes the current going that way. Either way you want to explain it, that's fine. But here's something else to think about now. Now I have an induced current flowing in this bar this way, don't I? But wait a minute. Do you know what that means? That means I have charges moving this way going across magnetic field lines coming out of the page. That means this induced current will get pushed by the magnetic field. You're like, what? Yeah, that's this guy. That's this guy. Force on a current carrying wire, IL cross B, yeah? This is my induced current that way. As it goes across field lines, that, that current is now going across field lines this way. As the current goes this way, it's going to make a force. Which way is that force going to go, folks? Which way is the force on this bar from the magnetic field? Here we go. Let's do our right-hand roll. I'm going to go IL, that's along the current, cross it with B. Here we go. Current going down. I need my hand like this. When the fingers curl, they'll go out with B. I'll cross B, thumb is to the left. That force from the B field will be to the left on that bar. And I think this should make total sense from a conservation of energy point of view. Imagine this, imagine this. What if there was no magnetic force on this induced current? I'd set this bar down on the rails and I'd go dink, and give it a little shove. And it would just start rolling and keep going constant speed with inertia, right? And I'd get current flowing around and get energy for free. And you say, that's not right. It all, the universe has to make me work to get that electrical energy. So if I try pushing this to the right, that induced current there's got to be a force on it against me so that to make it keep going right, I have to apply a force through a distance. I have to do work. There has to be an external force provided by me. Force external, EXT, okay. Force outside force from me to keep that thing going at constant speed. If I don't push hard enough, it would slow down, right? 
Okay. Or better yet, um, we get the idea. We get the idea. Okay. If I just give it a nudge and get it started, then it would slow, slow, slow to a stop. And the current would die down and everything, right? Where would that energy go then, do you think? So here we go, we're on to the next question, right? If I give this guy a nudge, right, get him started, boom, and current starts flowing, now this force fights against it and slows it down to a stop, where'd all that energy go? It had to go somewhere. The energy that's, the current that's flowing around, is it, once I get current charge flowing in a ring, would it just keep flowing and flowing and flowing? You say, ah, no, some of the energy will get turned into heat in the resistance in the wire. There is resistance in this circuit. This is like a circuit. I'm making current flow around. There is resistance in that metal, right? Okay, instead of talking about like my resistance per meter wire or something like that, or using uh, resistance as rho, L over V, right, the resistivity and stuff, let's just say that this, this whole, that this loop, like right here, let's say that I wired in here, let's say I hooked in a light bulb. Look. Right. There's a light bulb. Okay. That has a resistance big R. Okay. Then when I make current flow around here, by the way, this does not have to be hooked up for this to work. Right? I'll get current flowing around here. If that was connected, I'll get current flowing around both sides and then I gotta worry about resistance on this side. So let me let me let me amend that diagram and do this. I'm just gonna get current flowing around here. As the current flows through this guy, we're going to dump off energy as heat here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, it's going to make that light bulb glow and get hot, right? Okay. Um, and that's where the energy is going as it slows down to a stop. Okay. Um, so, here is the thing then. If I want this guy to go at constant speed and keep lighting up this bulb with a nice constant voltage, okay? Nice constant speed means a, means a nice constant E field, right? Okay, because in a constant magnetic force that I'm balancing, I, I erased the calculation where I derived this, didn't I? That believe calculation. Let's just do it again real quick. Um, for this to be nice and constant, then I need the force of the B field to balance out the force of the E field. And the force of the B field, uh, just real quick, I'm going to do this, try to run through this all super quick one more time. Okay, I'm going to start from the start. Here's my deal. Energy is being burned off here at some rate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah? You say, hey, do you remember how you figure out how quickly energy is getting uh, uh, turned into heat and light in a circuit? You say in a resistor? You say, yeah, we have a formula for that. That's that power, rate at which energy is transferred. Power for a circuit. Remember that power? Uh, we have an equation, it's I squared R in a circuit. Or if you like, it's... Uh, Delta V is IR, right? Okay, and so I could get rid of that I and say delta V over R is I, so delta V squared over R squared. So it'll be delta V squared over R, okay, is the power rating. That is how fast I am pumping energy out here, radiating energy out, yeah, yeah, taking it out of the charges. How fast do I have to put in energy here? It ought to be the same, shouldn't it, right? Let's do the calculation. What is the power, the rate at which I have to put energy in to shove that bar across? I'm doing work here, right? Pumping energy in, right? So you say, okay, power is gonna be my work per time, yeah? It's DW, DT, all right, yeah, 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 instantaneous, yeah, whatever. Okay, and you say, now work, you say, again, that's gonna be the DDT, of my work, work is my force through a distance. Yeah, yeah. I'm pushing with a constant force here. So that force is going to pop out of the integral and out of the derivative. That cos that this that there, that's going to be a cosine of the angle between my force and the dx, the distance I'm going. They go in the same direction, it's just cosine of zero degrees, which is just one. Integral of dx, that's just x. I want to take dx dt. What's dx dt? Oh, that's just v. Okay. That's how fast I'm pumping energy in. Force times that velocity. Okay. In this case, both of these are constant. 
Okay. Hey, how big is that velocity? This V here, right? I'm going to make that that curly V, curly accursive V, if that's helpful for you. I don't know if that's helpful, but um, you see, how fast is that velocity? Well, we, we said that velocity affects how big the magnetic field is, shoving the charges along the wire, right? Uh, force is QV cross B. I remember that I need the electric force and the magnetic force to balance out for this stuff to flow at a constant rate. Okay, in this case, the charges aren't going to build up at the ends of the bar, right? In this case, I'm making an E field that shoves the current along. Yes, I'm making. an E field going down on the wire, and the E field goes all the way around, actually. Right? Yes. And so, what's going to happen here, actually, is that um, yeah, I'm just going to go with it. Okay, it's going to make, make, make that like that. And so you say, okay. Uh, and so you said, hey, that force of the B field and that force of the E field have to balance out. You say, hey, the, the charge in my current, the force on the current would be like V cross B, that force would be, yes, yeah, see, that, that's what I thought. Why don't I have that E field? Why don't I have that going the wrong way? Okay, I know the induced current has to go this way. I know the induced current has to go that way. That means the E field's got to go that way, which means did I draw something wrong in my diagram before? V cross B forces down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hang on. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to that. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, this is the force from the B field shoving the charges down. That's right. This is the force from the B field, right? Well, yeah. Well, we already figured. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I got, I, got to figure out, I got to figure out the hard way here. Okay, got it. Okay. So that's going that way, right? Now, I need... Um, That force uh, on that current, then, right? Current's going down across field lines. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah. So the point is, yeah, yeah. And again, this is a bar of of length L here. Again, okay, from here to here, those contacts, points of contact. Um, of the ends going through the fields, I should say. It doesn't matter what the context. Um, but yeah, so, hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, I'm just gonna, we, we figured out before that, that this was gonna be the induced voltage in the bar going across the field. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to cheat, and we'll just go with it. So the point is then that uh, as I go around, this makes a voltage then, right? Shoving through the field creates this voltage. You say, if I go around the loop, I'm going to end up back where I started. So the voltage that this puts in is going to bounce up with the voltage that comes out here. So this actually is the delta V at the light bulb. Okay, I'm going to take that energy back out at the light bulb. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to work with that. Makes me mad that I'm not seeing off the top of my head exactly how I want to connect from there to there. That upsets me, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I know what I want to do. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, the point is that there's got to be an E field that, that, that happened that. Well, let's just work with this. Let's just work with this. Okay. Well, if I work with this guy, then I can talk about the fact that, oh, here, um, this is the power. Yeah, 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 ye
Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Okay, yeah, E is named BLV. So my EMF over BL is going to be V. I'm not going to worry about the sign. I'm just going to take the magnitudes, okay, if, if you don't mind. Um, so EMF over BL is my V. I can put that in there. Um, yeah, sure. This is that. I've been talking about the, the power done by this external force, by the way. Okay, so this is the external force. And that would be the EMF over BL. Okay, I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll just go with it for now. Okay, um, hey, that force though, we know that force has to balance out the force in the magnetic field on that induced current, and so that's got to be IL cross B, right? Because these forces have to balance, I'm going to go at constant speed, okay? Let's just do it this way. And again, I'm just going to say that my current is going directly across those magnetic field lines. Again, I could have did this problem with the E field line skewed at an angle or something, but let's just make that 90. So that's ILB EMF over BL, right? Oh, and of course, what do you get? You get I times EMF, right? And you say, hey, that's just I times the delta V. And you say, hey, that's just the power equation. That's the third form of the power equation here. So yeah. So. Point being, that work that I'm doing, that power, how quickly I'm doing work, shoving the bar, that's exactly equal to the power at which we're taking energy out, the rate which we're taking energy out the light bulb. Okay, is the point of this. This is not the tidiest derivation, I apologize. Um, however, the point, what we're getting out of this is, and this is kind of cool, is mechanical energy, right? The energy forced through a distance shoving on this is exactly equal to the electrical energy that we're getting out. Energy is energy. Mechanical and electrical can be converted from one type to another. And that's the point. That's what we're showing here. Alrighty. What would happen if this was getting faster and faster? If I or say, or what if I did give this a shove? Sorry. If I give this a shove, right? I don't keep pushing, I just give it a nudge to get it started. Well, There'll be a, then I won't have this force anymore. This force will be pushing against it, right? And so it will start to slow down, right? Yeah, yeah. You say, but wait a minute, as it slows down, the velocity decreases, so the voltage gets less, and so the induced current flowing, delta V is IR, induced current gets less, so then the force gets less. So I can see that if I want to talk about the speed of this guy, the faster I'm going, the bigger the force against me, so the bigger the acceleration. You say the acceleration pushing against me is a function of my velocity. So I have V and dV dt, the acceleration in the same equation, I would get a differential equation out. Okay, if I wanted to do an equation for uh, the velocity as a function of time, I'd have to solve a differential equation. Okay, which is something that you can do. All right, we we'll just be aware of that relationship for a multiple choice test, I would think. Um, all righty. Hey. That's motional EMF. That's what I wanted to show you. Um, if I hook this up like this and I shove this in a nice strong B field, if I shoved it really fast, I make a big voltage and this bulb light bulb would go ding. And if I slowed down, it would ding, and this bulb would go dimmer, right? Okay, so that power rating depends on how fast I am moving that bar, right? Okay, how fast I'm pumping energy in and how fast we're getting that energy out to light bulb. Okay, I'm just going to stop there.